we've got friends who come over and and we know kids for that this is a real issue for. Eric Adams says peanut-related allergies are part of every parent's reality, whether it affects their kids or not. But the associate professor says his new study found that peanut bans at schools may not be as effective as once thought. Students in those environments come into contact with, with peanuts at about the same rate that schools with no or partial bans come into contact with peanuts. And the study argues that students in scholastic environments that allow some peanut products will be more vigilant, both inside and outside the classroom. It may better mirror the actual world in which those students are going to have to live, in which they may come into contact with peanuts, whether they're in a restaurant or a movie theater. And so the school becomes a kind of a training ground. But that's not to suggest eliminating any safety measures. It's estimated that 2% of all Canadian children suffer from peanut allergies, and those allergies are legally considered a disability. Schools have to respond to the legal reality and the medical reality that some students are going to suffer from these kinds of issues. And so no response is not an option for schools and school boards. But whereas a blanket ban might be in the best interests of younger students, Adam suggests more nuance at later stages. But once kids are getting older and are more responsible and able to uh, police their own behavior around food, then maybe total bans actually are not the best policy response from schools. The study seems to go against the tide of recent years where more schools have adopted peanut bans. But Adams believes that, like many food policies beforehand, the pendulum will swing back to a more balanced approach. You know, we've been told that certain kinds of foods are, are dangerous and unsafe for us in large quantities and then realize that actually, no, those were maybe not based in good science. Ian Edmonton, Courtney Terrio, City News.